going? So does going back to Georgia ever get old? Going back to Atlanta now. We've, we've, I mean, gone back since my freshman year. Every year it's a perennial thing. And it's a lot of fun to always go play. It's such a cool stadium, whether that be the old Georgia Dome or now Mercedes-Benz. Mm -hmm. It's such a cool experience to go play there in front of the fans and the atmosphere, especially for an opening game. You couldn't ask for anything better. But for a guy who's from there? Oh, it's awesome. I got to play my senior year of high school, actually, in the state championship game. It was one of the last games in mm -hmm. the Georgia Dome. Mm -hmm. And so now we get to go back to Mercedes-Benz every year, and my family gets to come down and watch. It's so cool. Like, my little brothers get to come watch the game. How cool is that? Like, it's, it's really neat. How do you think your role is going to play out? Do you think you're more of an herb or hail in that sense? Um, you guys ask this one a lot. Are you more like herb or more like hail? Yeah, last year, yeah. Yeah, I, um, I wouldn't say I'm more like herb or hail. I just want to be a really good tight end. Right. Whether that looks more like herb or more like hail, I don't know. Kind of whatever Coach Stark or Coach right. Banks has in mind. But I'm going to try and take what they both did really well, how herb ran routes, mm -hmm. how hail blocked and I ran routes. I don't know if anybody of you guys have followed him, but, I mean, he's been killing it and hopefully he makes the team. But... I want to steal the good parts from both their game and kind of mold it into mine. Mm -hmm. So nothing exactly like Herbert Hale. I just want to be really, really good at what I do. But in this particular offense, what do you? I mean, do you see yourself being more, you know, um, like one or the other? Yeah, I think that kind of that'll unfold as the season goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of what our offense kind of molds into. It's obviously not going to look exactly the same game one as it will game eight. So I wish I could tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I catch a thousand balls, great. If I catch ten and I play really, really well, I'm completely fine with that. Mm -hmm. Just as I mean, are we going to win? <laughs> I don't care how many balls I catch. I don't know if you caught this or you're even aware, but uh, Alabama's depth chart has just one tight end position instead of the two. It's normally has the H back. Kind of mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on that? You know, and, and you know, what does that kind of say? More kind of a lot of similar type guys in that in that tight end group. Um, honestly, I haven't noticed it. First thing that comes to mind is uh, that's a testament to the guys we have in the room, and they can do both. Not necessarily that they're grouped for one or the other, but that everybody in the room can play both and know both. And if you can play both, the more valuable you are. And so I think, if anything, that's a testament to the guys that are in room with Cam and Giles and Major and Jaleel and Michael Parker and all those guys that they can do everything. And so we don't need to apply two tags to it when you can play both. How far is, is Giles and uh, uh, two? how far are they called? Talk about Trailer Park Jesus? Sure. Giles Amos? <laughs> is that what you call him? Oh, it's Trailer Park Jesus. So the coaches have coined him that name. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I couldn't be happier for any guy. That's, uh, he came in my freshman year with me. And I've gotten to be great friends with him. And to see him receive a scholarship, I mean, it was that meant the world to everybody in that room. It was awesome. But they've done, done great, and I mean, camp's been good for everybody. Everybody talks about how like young of a tight end room we have, and nobody's played. And you've played at Bama for a couple years. You've played. We play against the best players in the country every day in practice. So like, you get that experience. Whether it might not be in a game, whether you're going to scrimmage against Terrell Lewis and Anthony Jennings. I mean, <laughs> good luck. So those guys have, have grown and developed through camp. It's been great to see. What skills have you seen them develop? As in just Anything receiving specific. the ball. And, yeah. I mean, Coach Banks and these other coaches do such a great job of developing tight ends. I mean, you guys saw what Irvin Hale turned into. And um, as far as their inline stuff, receiving the ball, I mean, they're all around. That's what I said. You won't have those two tight end positions because they can do both. They can all block and they can all catch passes. So that's kind of what I've seen. Is that a lot of meme of Coach Banks thing? Trailer Park Jesus, is that a Coach Banks thing? That's one. I don't remember who said it. It was one of the coaches, though. But you guys can tell him. You're going to say it. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I mean, I'll take it. I don't want to steal from anybody else, but if we want to say who called Giles Amos Trailer Park Jesus, I'll say it. We've heard a lot about the red personnel. What's mm -hmm. it called when you have two tight ends on the field? Silver. Silver. So Silvers are two tight ends, red before receivers, and we have some decent receivers this year, so I'd assume we see it once or twice. What's your case for silver? Because the receivers have kind of made their case for red. Are you kidding me? I'll always argue. I'll, I'll argue for green or, or whatever we call three tight ends. <laughs> I mean, we've got we've got a great room, and I'd, I'd put our room up against a lot of them. So I take our guys over anybody. And there's been a lot of talk about the red, though. I mean, you know, obviously, but there's yeah. also no tight end on the field. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, just the, the fact that, I mean, is it just from your perspective they're taking advantage of the personnel they have? I mean, why, why wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. If we can score points and you guys can't cover our receivers, mm -hmm. then put in four receivers right. and they can't cover us, we're going to score a lot of points. And I'm not saying we couldn't do the same thing with tight ends. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a matchup and a personnel thing uh, via game. If they struggle lining up versus four receivers, I would argue to say we'd see more four receivers. If they struggle to line up to two tight ends or play two tight ends, we'll probably see more two tight end sets. Mm -hmm. That's a game to game thing. I think especially how comfortable Tua is or Coach Zark with, with, with how they've done in practice. I mean, is that the different perspective he brings coming from the NFL since the NFL is more of a matchup league and, uh, you know, same thing with Dable when he was here? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you could say that. I, mean, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's a huge difference, but I mean, there's definitely been a focus on, hey, 
they do this well, they do this well, we'll match it up versus game. I think all good coaches do that. You mentioned you came in with Giles. Yeah. You know, different situation, scholarship guy, mm -hmm. a walk-on. How do you see him kind of develop? What are some of those challenges, just from your perspective? You see the walk-ons come in, they, they, another yeah. round just came in, I guess this last week or mm -hmm. so. What, what are some of those challenges that they face? Um, I mean, those guys chase, face a lot of challenges, like a scholarship guy I wouldn't see, as far as like all the meals and the books and and paying for a lot of stuff and a lot of care that other people might not get. But, I mean, Giles Amos has done the, the best job of anybody I've seen. You can ask any of the, ask some of the DBs next time they're up here how covering Giles Amos went on the scout field for the first couple of years. I mean, Giles is over top of guys pulling the ball off. It's like warm ups. He's laying out out of bounds. So I mean, he earned that scholarship, and the guy's a heck of a ball player. And it's been fun to just kind of grow up and be with him. Hey, Giles. And so how that's gone. So it's it's been a lot of fun. Terrell told us about how Tommy kind of caught the brunt of uh, Terrell just being so excited to get back out there on the yeah. field during one of the scrimmages. Have you gone against him and seen that same thing? Yeah, Terrell was pretty good. He's not bad at all. So I'm, I'm super excited to see him kind of get back out on a field. It's been a couple years since he's been healthy, and now he's healthy, and it's scary. So good luck to everybody trying to block him. That's all i got to say. What was it like sitting down with Mike Tyson and, and talking with him in the barbershop speaking of scary? I was... It was me and Raekwon and, and Dylan, and we're all sitting there like trying to like be cool, be cool, be cool. And then Raekwon's like, it's Mike Tyson. We're like, oh, it's Mike Tyson. <laughs> like fangirling a little bit. As soon as he walked in, we're like, oh, hey, what's up, man? And uh, we, we played it all cool. But that was, I mean, that was once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm going to sit there. Yeah, I got my hair cut with Mike Tyson. How cool was that? Just sit there and kind of appreciate that. It was, it was so cool. All right, thank you.